Greetings, survivors and friends, Shadowfrax here, and as we head screaming for February's patch next week, here's all the stuff you need to know in Rust development, and of course most of this is currently on the staging branch where you can test it out. I've got all the latest changes to backpacks coming up as they're going to be a big part of next week's patch, along with a few other things that are being worked on, including some details on the nightlight Helk's been working on. But first of all, beepity beep beep, the metal detector and shovel have been merged to staging and are ready for action. Here's how they work, and remember, this is all still subject to change, for another week at least. The metal detector is a default blueprint at the moment. It costs two rope and 200 wood to craft, because naturally that's what they're all made of, don't you know? And the shovel doesn't appear to be craftable just yet, so I'm not sure on that one at the moment. To use a detector, simply whip it out and start moving around, and as soon as you get fairly near to something metal in the ground, it'll start beeping. You'll also notice some LED lights, which will give you a visual indication of how warm you're getting, and that replace the on-screen UI that I showed in the last vid. Once you've filled up the bar and got close enough to something, it's time to home in on it by holding the right mouse button. This will then allow you to start filling up the second bar of LEDs, pinpointing the exact spot of the treasure and placing down a small flag. At this point, you can deploy the shovel and start digging, and once thrice thwacked, the buried booty will pop straight up out of the ground. As the shovel is a separate tool, it'll probably make things a lot more efficient if you had a buddy to dig up what you find. I don't know, another thing that benefits clans. As far as I can see, it works in most areas, but I don't know whether the things you'll find will vary from one locale to another. And don't worry, there's nothing to see here. You won't be finding AKs. This is an aberration and will be fixed by management in due time. The loot table isn't finalised yet, you see, so the things you're seeing me wumble for aren't indicative of the final hordes you'll be able to uncover, although I won't turn my nose up at cans of beans. Anything that gets us closer to that elusive tier 2 cooking, eh? Talking of tier 2 cooking, today's sponsor is Factor. Factor delivers fresh, pre-prepared, restaurant-quality meals to your doorstep that are ready to eat in just minutes. And as there's no prep and no mess, that means so much extra time to spend on more pleasurable activities like sitting down and playing games. Also add to that list some other really nice things such as not having to go out of the house to get ingredients, not having to do the washing up, and my personal favourite, not even having to think about what to cook tonight. Your synapses will be barely firing but you'll still be eating like a king. Factor offers a rotating weekly menu of over 34 delicious meals, plus a shed load of add-ons like smoothies, shakes, desserts and more, and with dieting options such as vegan, vegetarian, calorie smart and keto all catered for, there's got to be plenty on offer here to satisfy your appetite. Not only is Factor incredibly convenient, it's now more affordable than ever. Just use my link in the description or my code POGFRAXJAN50 to not only get 50% off your first box, but also free wellness shots for life. Thank you to Factor for sponsoring this video. Back to the news, and now to the latest tweaks and changes to backpacks, which as you'll recall from last vid are going to come in two sizes, and I'm sorry but it appears that there may be one or two tiny visual bugs at the moment with them but I'm sure management will have these fixed very soon. Guess this adds a new meaning to bum bag. First thing you'll notice is that now weapons are being displayed on the sides of backpacks instead of them just poking out of the top, and this is all nice and tidy and makes much more sense. Also, you'll notice that when opening a backpack in your inventory, your character model will rotate and move over instead of disappearing, which is a nice little touch. As well as this, the large backpack capacity has been reduced slightly to 28. There were some tweaks to despawn times in addition, and these will depend on what's in them. For instance, an empty small backpack will despawn in 20 minutes, and an empty large one in 40, but this will increase with the amount and types of items inside them up to a maximum of two hours. All of this backpack stuff is, of course, also subject to change, so don't take anything here as final yet. Something that happened earlier in the month that I should really cover again is that shelters are being limited down to one per player at a time, although I have found out that there is a convar that server owners can set to adjust this, which is server.max underscore shelters, with the default being one. There are some other tweaks being made that you need to know about. Eokas will be more likely to shoot after every failed strike. Samsites won't shoot down MLRS rockets. Ladder hatches will no longer require ladders to repair. Embracers and shutters will be rotatable using R when being deployed, and an option's being added to have the map button as a toggle instead of having to hold it. To works in progress, and some new items are in the works. Probably later today, a couple of Lunar New Year bits and pieces should be added to staging, but here's an image of one, a dragon launcher, which looks like a reskin 
for the rocket launcher and along with this there's also mention of a spear. As well as this there are commits relating to a frontier hatchet, so we're not quite done with the frontier stuff it seems, and of course there's still work on going for an M939 American truck. The compound redesign is in full swing with commits showing it'll have city hall and helipad, rooftop rope bridges, a graveyard fence, zip lines, a cobalt brutalist statue and a church among other things. Looking forward to seeing how that turns out. There's more work on an improved skin viewer and of course Tutorial Island which hopefully I will be able to show you something more on next week so stay tuned and sub to keep in the loop on that one. And lastly, Helk has been working on a night light which details have been sparse on but I did manage to find out something about this although I must stress it's all very experimental and I wouldn't get your little hopes up about it just yet. This is in an effort to make nights slightly more pleasant and the idea is that there will be a dim light in a small radius surrounding the player to help them navigate in the dark and will simulate their eyes adjusting. And don't worry, this is only meant to be visible to the player himself and doesn't mean that you'll be able to see glowing players in the distance. I mean, I know we're radioactive, but that would be taking it a bit too far. Still not sure if this will be a definite thing yet, but I will let you know when I get my hands on it, so stay tuned. That's about all there is to show and tell at the moment, but come back next week and I'm sure I'll have much more. In the meantime, please leave a like, sub and a comment below to tell me what you think. You can find me on Twitch and lots of other places, including my Steam group, and also support my work here via Patreon, YouTube memberships and super thanks. I shall catch you all soon, but in the meantime, keep calm and stay rusty. Cheerio. Guess this adds a new meaning to bumbag.